Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast once again. Sorry, Erin. <laughs> it's been a rough week. Has it? I've had the best week. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that Amari always does that? Like, I'll be like, I feel sick. And he'll be like, I feel fine. And the other day, I finally, after like seven years of this, called him out for that. I was like, that is not how you respond to someone. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I couldn't no, help it. But it's... You should have a good week. That's amazing. He should feel fine. But it's just that that was just like weird, weird timing. <laughs> yeah. OK, so what happened? What was wrong with your week? I've been saying this across the past couple episodes and maybe I'm just, you know, finally reaping all the karma for my terrible decisions across my life. But this year's bingo card is just unlike any one I've ever had. And I actually can't talk about what's happening right now at all because of legal issues and my safety which oh, right. is paining me so heavily that's fair but because it is it is the story time of the century and the second that I can talk about it I will and it is just yeah it's the story time of the century or I'm going to end up on dateline but I'm trying I love dateline <laughs> yeah, you're going to love it so much. Brooke's going to be on this couch alone. I'm just um, kidding. No. Yeah, that's really like all I can say. I am like documenting what's going on because I like I have this weird thing where I'm like if something absolutely terrible is happening to me, I might as well document it because like what else are you going to do? That's basically my whole life. Yeah. Um and eventually it it will be out there but um yeah that's fair Security's i feel like it's outside just, just another thing to add to the list but with the, here's what i will say i had a period like this you know recently mm -hmm. for a couple months like it was like bad thing after bad thing after bad thing and now it it's over and so many things that are just like out of my control i i and i hate feeling like all like it's just raining and all these bad things are happening to me mm -hmm. and I can't control it. Like what's next? Like, and I'm just, yeah. And everyone always says like, Oh, time will heal. But it's like, okay, but when does it start? Because it's like, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. That's, I'm definitely in that period of life right now. And I'm trying to navigate that. Um, I sent myself away to Malibu this past weekend and then a bunch of bad things happened. So I had to come home, bad things out of my control, but the intent was to send myself there for peace, relaxation, no temptations of LA, no being able to call Chris Miles, no being able to call anyone, no being able to go out to a party, like just be isolated by the beach and not drink and not do anything. And I think I am, I'm re-entering my journey of sobriety. That's, I, I think that's what's best. It, I just really came to the realization, like, I had this really, like, insane night the other night where I, like, went out to um, Ryan's birthday and then, like, got there at 6 p.m. By the time I left Ryan's at 11 p.m., I was doing unspeakable, uh, illegal, terrible things. Went to my old house, um, like, the Hype House old house. Oof. They were having a pregame there, like, another. I got to Ryan's and I'd already taken, like, 10 shots. And then took another 10 there. And then took another like eight at like my old house. Then Diablo was DJing somewhere. So I went there. Then I'm with Chris and Cody. We're going to this place in LA called <laughs> Have you ever been to I don't think so. I've heard of it. It's a club that opens at 2 a.m. Like, you know how the liquor laws here like oh, shut is off. It like a, is it like a secret It's like underground society? secret society club. I'm definitely going to have to bleep the name of it. But essentially, they open at 2 a.m. So it's like if you're at the club and you still want to keep drinking and you want bottle service and a bar and you want to go out, you go to this underground club that's open till like 6 a.m. I wonder if they'll ever just change the liquor laws like New York and have it. They were supposed to. Oh, that's what I thought, too. Um, And of course, I know that because I'm insane. But um. <laughs> Whenever you set foot in one of those underground, like illegal clubs that open at 2 a.m., you just know, like, like that is the moment Tana knew she like fucked you up. Should you should know? have gone home. And, and then I went Long to an after then. party after that. Oof. Then I came back here and. God, you're agile. I came back here and made a really questionable decision. Um, oh, no. I don't even want to. I can't, I can't even inquire. talk about it. It's, um, yeah. And I didn't sleep after said questionable decision. I woke up and I was like, okay, I have to get out of LA because I feel like I'm going through so much right now where I'm like, it's very easy to fall into the trap of like drowning your problems out. You know? Yeah, that's true. It's like a horrible cycle. Cause like I'll do the same thing where I'll like 
you know, drink or get like just so obliterated one night. And then the next day I'm like, I have to stop. But like, I have so much anxiety about it and like so much like remorse that I'm like, oh, got to do it again. It just becomes this Which like. Which I think is just alcoholism. Yeah. And it just becomes this extreme loop in L.A., is like a terrible black hole that so, like I feel like the energy in LA almost feeds off of broken people who like need that like need to go out every yeah, night well need they, to abuse that's substances where the, all the money comes from yeah and so I got out of LA to get away from that and clear my head and kind of embark back on a better journey and deal with my problems the good old-fashioned way with therapy and whatever um, but then terrible, more, more terrible things yeah. happened out in Malibu that I can't wait to talk about. So I had to come home. Okay. Um, well, I, I respect your um, willingness to go and the intent was there. And I feel like that's your head's in a good place. Yeah. Cause I just know this can't like be my life Mm-mm. and I'll get on like a really good path and then bad shit will happen. And the way I like deal with bad shit is like more bad shit. Like, I'm almost like a masochist to myself. Like, I'll hurt myself 10 times more than anything else is hurting me. And I just, like, go down such an insane path. And I feel like I just have so much unresolved trauma and things I need to actually work through. And it's crazy how easy it is to just numb that. Yeah, But I'm trying not to. And I'm hoping it will be a sleigh. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like therapy will help. I need to get back for sure. I mean, I'm doing well right now, actually. I'm like, I'm like very happy. I'm like doubled my dose. <laughs> um, but I'm like on this like therapy, like childhood trauma therapy TikTok now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, like who knew? <laughs> it's just, and I feel like I do this too. Like I'll go to therapy of, over like a major event and then I'll stop going and then I'll be like, I'm fine. And then more bad shit happens and then I'm in the like, I'm fine mindset. And then you just wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, I'm Yeah, but so you're supposed fine. to see, keep going when you're fine. I think that's the problem. That, it's like, people, it's like getting off antibiotics like before, you, you know, you yeah, run out. Before the chlamydia is gone. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's like. It's still dormant. It's dormant. <laughs> the trauma is dormant, whether, whether you feel it or not. so, so, so dormant. Oh, my spray tan on my foot is not giving. Wait, I have to pee. Sorry. God, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Welcome back. <sighs> <laughs> I need to check my phone. I was just telling Aaron I tried to do a little um sobriety run. It yeah. was like I wasn't taking it super seriously just cuz like honestly alcohol isn't really the worst of my issues. But yeah. Then I had to drink cuz I ha- I went on a date and lord knows I'm not going on a date sober. Yeah, I honestly you'd be really proud of me. I have been also on a dating cleanse. Oh good. Since I've decided to be on this journey. Um I feel like that it's, can sometimes be worse uh, like on you than it's crazy is. too. like when you stop reciprocating people's like mediocre energy, like people just being like, hi, or like, what are you doing tonight? Or like, whatever, you know? Yeah, no, sorry. If you stop reciprocating all energy like that, like you see the people that actually really want you and pursue you and are checking on you if you are being healthy and stuff, which I think, sorry, I'm so out of breath. There's so many stairs here. So many stairs. It's so <laughs> stupid. Oh my god. God damn. No, it was crazy. I ran Where up them you? so fast. Like, who did I think I was? Like Usain Bolt? Like walk. Like I just saw stars. Prime almost like came out of my nose track. just now. What did you say? Did Drink you Prime. Let like a high school track train you. I, I I've let a high school track train me in a different way though. So I do. Whoa. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like letting a track team run a train on you, but it was a joke. Oh, I've never had actually a- T- Tana just told me the other day she goes, "I've never had a train ran on me." I'm like, Good. "First of all, I can and I know that I never can, okay? I was going to keep going on this sobriety and health talk, but we can Oh, no, you go ahead and keep going on that. The train is not important. No, 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 I know, but I just I'm now I now I need to get it off my chest cuz you brought it up. Okay. The other day Ty was like, "Tana, would you ever let people like run a train on you like four guys?" And I was like, yes, it's my dream. It's like my biggest thing. Like, it's the only thing that I just like really haven't done that I would really love to do. But, but to all of the people that are clipping this, I have not and I will not. And I First know- of all, if whoever's clipping it already ended. It, it, <laughs> it, they, the clip was over. It's so true. <laughs> um, I know that I can't like societally the way that people would look at you the rumors that would spread about well, why you, like, would they know and because because just, look at Trevor Wallace and Bryce Hall and so true you would have to do somebody with um discretion but yeah but for the sake of the story give me your dream train right now 
I don't think I have one. You My ha- dream train I, I is just a train. I want it to be like That's, all. No, you have to have a little more. We were dying laughing the other day at the idea of like lining up like the last five guys I've like talked to or dated. And that was the train. And it's so funny how they're all they, completely. They could not like they, it looks like you like picked out one person from like every little walk of the world. It's like I, I really have no type like the last couple people, you know, that I've been. I guess I don't just, either. Like no, like, like imagine a, a train lineup of like the last like five people you've slept with. I don't even like know how the last it five would just it with. would look like. A, I don't even know. I can't remember the last five people I've slept with. That's what I was trying to get at. <sighs> it's been a long away. time, too. I'm in a major, major dry spell. right Well, now. I'm entering the dry spell. I really am That's to good. get back to our, our healthiness. I just feel like I was letting too many and I don't mean like sexually. I just mean in general spending time with people, going on dates with people, like letting too many people soak up my energy mm-hmm. and also me soaking up theirs. And like, I really just need to focus on myself. So I am in a dry phone era. Like I'm trying to be, I'm trying to ignore everyone. And, you know, may the best person who's willing to wait through and support that win. Well, and that's the thing. They're going to f- like fall off on their own. You know what I mean? What do they say? Yeah. R- rotten fruit will fall on its own. That was beautiful, bro. Thank you. That's what I say about all the people that I don't like, but you like you. I don't have to tell anyone else not to like them because like they'll figure it out. All that was beautiful. Falls on its that own. was really really beautiful. Thank um, you. Yeah. So last night we went to dinner by the beach as we were. It started like the dinner reservation started as just like a fun dinner reservation. Like, oh, Tana's by the beach. We're all going to go visit her. And then all of this bad shit started happening. So it tur- like we're all dressed in like nice dresses, heels. Like we're so excited to be there. And then the bad shit kind of starts unfolding across this dinner. And so then it just turned into this like big group meeting. And um, the waitress was like a super big fan of the podcast and everything. And she came up to me at the end of dinner and she said the craziest stuff to me. Like she was just like. I appreciate how you guys are so self-deprecating, but like, I know that's not who you are. And I feel like, like who you are to the core. Like, I know that you do love yourself and you just like, don't talk about your struggles enough and like all that type of thing. And it's just, it made me like, we definitely should shine a light on healthy things more than we yeah, do. I think and so too. I, think I appreciated what she said. Yeah. I, I would love to like get honestly more into like talking about serious stuff, but I just feel like we t- we're together so often. We are so close that it's almost like, we already t- have talked about all those things. So yeah. Like so, and just it's just need- like, it's so much easier to bring up the funny shit. You know what I mean? And yeah. Just like funny. gay son, thought daughter. Yeah. It's, and it, it always works well. Gay you son. went, speaking of, I guess, <laughs> um, speaking of family trauma, childhood oh. trauma, you went home to Arizona. I did. I brought Lila and Natalie home to Arizona. The fact that we all have family so accepting that we can like Lila told me at one point she was what was she telling your mom what was she saying in front of your mom she was saying she well you guys obviously know my family's like really crazy my mom's like especially crazy and Lila said or was like going on this she was giving a toast as she does and she's like I love you know that Brooke has been with me since I was robbing the grocery store and you know stealing all my groceries and couldn't afford this and my mom looked at her and she goes did you see how many presents I brought <laughs> like <laughs> Oh, I still no. haven't met your mom. I, I know. know. Well, we've nobody. Ever... So that that's what was so crazy about it is like Lila and Natalie were the first two people to ever meet my family. Yeah. Like at all. I've never, ever introduced a single friend to anybody in my family for, I mean, not obvious reasons. Like I don't, not that it's like so shameful or anything, but I have never had friends that like were like accepting and fun and yeah, cool or just like, like had faced any sort of adversity at all. Like as soon as I got with my grandparents, I was around like very like normal people with normal lives and normal upbringing. Yeah, so, it felt so like, they would have been fucking terrified if I brought them yeah. around my family. And that in is the one, nicest way possible. That is one good thing about our friend group is even even though we're insane, being insane does create for such an accepting environment. You know, yeah, like we're so crazy that we're not judging anyone for anything, right. which I think is good. And I felt bad like literally probably four different times someone would pull me aside and be like it's so special that you like brought them because like like th- you're you're not ashamed to show them like blah blah, blah. and I was like I felt so bad because it was like honestly I what I was for so long I was like yeah. so ashamed of that you and can't now feel I'm like guilty for that though it's I know like but, a normal but they were so happy and my mom loved they loved Lila loved Natalie we're gonna go back every year we went for like a my 
cousin's daughter's birthday party. Yeah. It's her first birthday. And like, swear to God, I'm going to, we're going to be at her sweet 16. We're going to like, we have I'm going to go back. Every, no, it's going to be like our new thing. Cause it was so fun. Like I had such funny. FOMO. One good thing about if Lila goes on a trip with someone that I can't go on or I'm not there, Lila sends like 48 videos a minute of like what's going on. So I was in New York and I was just like, I felt like I was there. I was getting like the live recap and I had so much fucking FOMO. It was so fun. And, and I just, I've, I told you guys so many stories, like, really crazy stories that you guys are like there's no way that happened like there's no way that's true and like tori my sister was making everything like so much worse because she first of all remembers more second of all like i leave out some things (laughs) (laughs) and like it's crazy she was telling us a story about a time she accidentally went to school with a meth pipe in her pocket (laughs) because it was like left around the house or in a in a jacket (laughs) Oh, and what is, did your mom do just come pick her up yeah she came to pick her up i don't know if she's gonna like me telling that story but my mom's doing much better now yeah she's saying no we but like on. just um, cr- the craziest shit that like just it, shouldn't it, happen. like i say to my friends and they're like yeah right absolutely that on the cool. plane ride home from turks you and me were doing that we were like you and me were sitting across from each other on the plane and we were um just sharing stories with like, like the like most ari outlandish stories like ari and lila and everyone like they love our childhood stories because like Ari had like, I, I don't want to say normal childhood. Every family has their issues and Lord knows Ari's got some issues, but I'm saying just financially there was never an issue. And I think that a lot of the things that like our parents did are, is so like shocking to other yeah, people. He, it's, it, and Lila too. Cause Lila came from like such a like golden retriever family. She's like, yeah. they, no way. But yeah. we were ba- like literally bouncing back and like, forth. Like, oh my God, your parents did that. It reminds me of the time this, Oh my God, this. And we was, were doing it for like an hour and everyone was just like strapped to their seat looking <laughs> at us with like, like I think Ari teared up at one point and I was like, that's crazy. Like to make I you know. cry over my child. That is absolutely not a real thing really funny but i love i love that i feel like that's what's kind of special because obviously like i mean you're literally my richest friend but also the only friend i have that can relate on any level like in that regard i'm trying to think of the stories that we told do you remember you told a good story about getting hit in the head with the macbook charger (laughs) oh my god i'll never actually ever 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 forget that like my grandma bought me a macbook first of all like it wasn't even like you know what I mean? And just like she took out her last line of credit for that. Bless her heart. Rest That's in peace. Really she was also sweet. really terrible in so many ways. So, I mean, I, I, des- I deserve that. That was like a compensation MacBook. Like, please don't go to the police MacBook. Yeah. Um, and but this you, was like a MacBook nonetheless. Well, it was how I started my YouTube channel. It was the only reason I could. And that was like all I wanted. So it meant a lot to me. And I'll never fucking forget. My family got in this huge fight. And I'm, I'm not going to say how because that's how you get sued. So this is all alleged. Um, the MacBook brick hitting me so hard in the head. That it broke the MacBook brick. See, like, that is like not even okay. Like imagine a MacBook brick f- coming flying across the room and hitting you so hard in the head that it breaks the brick and not your head. Yeah, you must have a skull of steel. I think I do. Maybe that's why I like getting like hit. Huh? <laughs> or maybe the MacBook charge is why I like getting hit. Yeah, honestly, that uh, like head trauma is probably the reason you like getting hit. Yeah, there's a lot of shit going on up here for real. I'm trying. There were like funnier ones though, and I can't. No, I can't. I can't either. I, you were told a really good one. I'm trying to think. I, d- I told a story. I remember like we never had a car, and like I remember my mom like borrowed a car from somebody one time, and the brakes didn't work. So you she, have to get out at every just, stoplight, and like I don't know what she was doing. Like I think she had to like use the emergency brake to actually stop the car. But if it was red, she didn't care. Like she's going and I like think about like me and my sister like just in the car and it's just rolling through the lights. And like how, when you get somewhere, how does that I work? I guess again? emergency break, right? I don't know. Yeah, that'd work. A That's lot of it, crazy. it's hard because mine, like I was with my grandparents since I, like from nine on. So like some of it, I don't even really remember. But Tori will tell stories like and I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot yeah anything i can think of is just like super dark and we probably shouldn't get into i know well that's hard too because like i tell him now and i'm like hee hee that's so funny and everyone's like um i don't think that's funny that's such a bad problem with me like whenever i tell a story about my childhood literally at all everyone's like oh i learned that early on that's why that's why i'm so like adamant about telling stories in our group now because i didn't get to tell them ever I, i told like three stories when i got with my grandparents and i realized that it was like people didn't like that and i was like okay maybe better not better not 
Did you know traditional therapy visits are on average over $100 per session? That can add up to thousands of dollars a year. Cerebral is a 100% online mental health service that offers expert therapy and medication management for anxiety, depression, insomnia, stress, burnout, and more. Cerebral wants everyone to have a strong start to their mental health journey. That's why they're offering strong start packages that reward you with a discount when you commit to a long-term mental health plan. If you've ever watched this podcast, you know I need therapy and Cerebral is here to help. Cerebral is here for anyone who's looking to find flexible mental health care with a licensed and credentialed care team that they can truly connect and feel comfortable with. It's 100% online. You take a brief assessment and receive personalized care team recommendations based off of your needs and preferences. Through the Cerebral app, you can easily book and reschedule your sessions, get your questions answered, and access additional mental health resources such as CBT exercises. Cerebral understands that finding a therapist isn't a linear journey, and if your therapist isn't a match, Cerebral will help you find a provider that meets your needs. Cerebral is one of the few services that provides medication management online through a licensed provider if clinically indicated, which means that you can get both expert therapist and prescriber through one platform. Plus, Cerebral offers medication shipping if prescribed. Connect with your therapist on your own schedule. Book and schedule sessions based on what's most convenient for you. You don't have to wait weeks to be seen. 80% of members can see a provider within five days. You can do your sessions on a laptop or a phone so that you can attend your sessions where you feel the most comfortable. Cerebral offers affordable plans and is available with or without insurance. Cerebral is in network with several major insurers and when you're in network, your monthly cost is even lower. 50% of Cerebral's clinicians self-identify as people of color. It's important to Cerebral to maintain this diversity so everyone who needs care can get the treatment they deserve. Canceled listeners will receive access to Cerebral's Strong Start Care Package, which allows you to save up to $160 when you buy two or four months of care in advance, depending on plan selection. Let's do this together. Make a strong start to a better you. Get started at Cerebral.com slash canceled. That's Cerebral.com slash canceled for quality mental health care that's accessible and affordable. Join Cerebral today. I don't think we've told this story on the podcast before but the vegas thing one time tan and i were staying in a hotel room together in vegas where there was like a living room and a bed a bedroom and i was the first to get home so i was sleeping in the bed this was, and was my boyfriend so, i'm not it was her that boyfriend. much of a whore. so she at the time or she like pulled out the little futon in the in the living room okay so kindly and the way that the door was it was like a glass door it was like a foggy glass door so you couldn't actually see through it but mm. like you turned the flashlight on on your phone and it was dark in there <laughs> so she was doing like shadow puppets on the ceiling but it was just her sucking dick <laughs> and it was like i could see it i couldn't physically see her but since she had put her flashlight on it was like like it was projected onto monster, the ceiling monster penis so it really well, made you like well, great shadow puppet. first of all with the shadow puppet it was fucking 10 feet long <laughs> okay but i was just laying in bed like oh my god do i like do i make movement like she like do i tell her but it was like it was just a shadow (laughs) but just really crazy i thought you're gonna tell a different story where me you and chris miles yeah i don't watch but but we learned our lesson about telling that story well i was just gonna say that we all watch porn together in a miami hotel room okay but that was like it wasn't just regular (laughs) porn it wasn't like to get us like horny okay it was like very unique porn that we were like uh, curious about (laughs) Can I tell a story? Absolutely. So I was in Vegas with two of my buddies to go see like a concert or somebody. <laughs> and um, you know what? Or when we were young is or something like that. It's like some emo. Oh, event. when we were young. Festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it got canceled and we didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. So we were going to go see something else. And um, but we went to this club. It was like emo night in Vegas. And Sounds terrifying. My buddy ended up talking to this girl. It was like 3 a.m. They go back to our ho- our, our hotel room, and our hotel room is like just two queen size beds, oh, with no. like a, the bathroom's like a sliding bar and door. Mm-hmm. My one buddy's passed out on one. I'm going to sleep on the other, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to this girl's hotel room, but it's like a half mile <laughs> walk. It's 3 a.m. at this point. I'm like, okay, fuck it, I'm going to sleep. Wake up at five. I'm like, oh, he's back. Oh, he has somebody with him. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna happen, but they go in the bar, the bathroom, and they do their shit." I'm like turning the AC on and off so I can't fucking hear anything. Do you know <laughs> that's kind? Wait. Oh. But he come he talks to me in the morning after. Apparently he she asked him to like close his eyes just randomly at one point. He was like, "Okay, that's weird." And he like glanced down, she took her teeth out. She's like 22 by the way. I mean, he said it was the best thing he's ever had like in his denture? life. Like dentures. Oh, yeah. so she gave a toothless head. Yeah. <gasps> I bet that's amazing. Well, remember, oh, Trevi would always say toothless, gagless, throat fuck. 
Like it, that's the vibe that you want to oh give. My so God. I bet it's probably the yeah. best blowjob. Oh, you said it was wait, amazing. I have dentures <laughs> tomorrow. No, my si- okay. Wait, low key, my sister has dentures by accident. Well, because of her, like she got in a bad car accident and like yeah. shattered the bottom half of her face, so she lost her teeth and she can't get new ones yet. Mm-hmm. So they just like she can just take them out and do that too. It's crazy because I can think of the caliber of men that would be like so into that, and it's like more more so my type. Yeah, and I don't the know. I don't men that would be like, do not do that. But that's you know crazy. I mean? the gums. But did she think he wasn't gonna notice? I don't know. I, that's how I feel right now, taking in and out of my Invisalign. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, hold on a second. Should we get dentures? Could be maybe. Fine. Not do you know that I was? I was talking to this guy, and a while ago, and I asked him how he lost his virginity, and he told me, like, this just reminded me of that that. He was in a hotel room with two queen beds with his mom and brought his girlfriend and his mom was like awake and he just like went in the bath and was like, we're going to shower and fucked his girlfriend like in the shower, like one like centimeter away from his like awake mom, like reading a book. Oh my God. I I would never, I would never like people have stories of like their parents being home even I wouldn't have done. I was like so scared when I was younger, even now. I just think that's fucking weird. I I think that's really weird too. But I I guess when you're young, I guess they're just like, they just want to make it happen. That's fair. Yeah. So Amari saw me have sex. You saw your family. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine Amari with like pom poms cheering you on. I really also. I know he puts up like a card, like ten out of ten. Yeah. I just like he remembers more than I do, but I think it was a good time on all ends, and everything's good. Well, that's good. Um, At least you're getting some. Except we are. You are practicing celibacy now. Yes. And I, maybe not necessarily celibacy, just not feral behavior, moving with intent, moving with thought. Okay. Yeah. Qu- quitting cold turkey isn't reasonable. Uh, anything, really. You know what I mean? Like a sip of beer so I'm not fucking dying, trembling, shaking. All right. Going out in LA, surrounding myself with people who do bad things, making, and just being around like enabling behavior as well. People who enable bad behavior. I think that I'm really actively choosing who I'm surrounding myself with right now and if it's not people that are gonna like make me better I just know I can't be around them and eventually I can like when I did 75 hard I was spending so much time around people like drink this do this let's go out and I was like no 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 but I think yeah I feel the like first like week of it is so or like two weeks of it is so like I found out really quickly because it was like I was just for a second I was like you know what I'm just gonna try not drinking for a little and like I, maybe it's just because people don't know in the beginning how serious you are about it. So they'll just be like, oh, shut up. Like, fucking take a drink or whatever. But it's like, I want to be like, okay, fine. Yeah. And I'm like, God, I, I'm, well, I'm so easily persuaded too. That well, I and just like, seeing people like, when you so heavily associate that with having so much fun, mm-hmm. you have the mindset of like, oh my God, they're having so much fun and I'm not right now. Should I join them and have so much fun? And then eventually when you kind of get out of that headspace and you're like, wait, that life isn't fun. Yeah. And being healthy is fun. Being up early is fun. Being your best self is fun. Working hard is fun. Like having wholesome fun that you remember and don't make awful decisions is fun. Mm -hmm. Then it's like you can see that clearly. But I think in the first couple of weeks, that's why I was like sending myself to Malibu and chicks. I was just like, I, I know that I'm never going to like embark on this journey unless I like get the fuck away from. Yeah. You had to get the ball things. rolling first. Yeah. Now I'm going to London tomorrow. Oh, that's exciting. Every single time I start a sobriety journey, I have a flight that day. And it, for anyone who has ever tried to go sober, I just think airports make it so much harder. Like, because what do you do when you get to the airport? Well, that's not actually what everybody does. It's just what you do. That's fair. But not just me. Me and <laughs> I everyone I know, you know. That's true. But I got it from, like, uh, I got it from our group. <laughs> from you. <laughs> um, you go to the bar. An international flight. You want to drink wine to, like, fall asleep. Like, yeah, that's true. But take three Benadryl and call it a day. Oh, absolutely. And that is that is the goal and the plan. It's just so weird. It, every single time I've ever started a sobriety journey, I have a flight that day. And it, like, makes yeah, it ten times it harder. Yeah, it is, like, a bad coincidence. Like, ugh. But it definitely also tests your, like, like if I can do it on, at this airport, I can do it at a dinner. If I can do it at this airport, I can do it. Yeah, and this will be fun. So it's just so you and Paige forth. going. So I feel like it's not going to be, yeah. you're not going to be, like, super tempted. Or can anything. I say something? That's going to offend a lot of people. Well, sure. (laughs) That's the new intro. Um, And let me preface this, okay? Maybe I just haven't been shown what there is to love. And that's 
I'm also from America and I'm terrible. But I hate London. Really? So fucking much. Oh, that's sad. I wanted to. Well, I've never been, but I wanted to like it. Why is the sky always gray? Oh, me? That's so me. I love that. British people hate American people so much, or at least I'm like, me. Here. And I get it. I'm like blonde. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I, I'm so American. I'm so LA. I'm so like, I could see why a British person would hate me, but it would get to the point when I would be in London for long periods of time that I would like perfect my British accent so that I could go out and people would treat me like nicer than they would treat me if I didn't have one. Yes, like, fake accent. Th- but like they hate, like you, you could literally be like, can I get a coffee? And they're like, here's your coffee. It's so amazing. And I could be like, can I get a coffee? And they're like, hold on. Like it's like. How crazy. Like they just like fucking hate Americans so much. Why is the food? And I, I don't, I know that American food is filled with MSG and terrible things and you become accustomed to it and you like it. But like the food in Italy is amazing. The well, food in. Yeah. The food in anywhere else in Europe is amazing. The food you, in the Ireland is amazing. In the food is amazing in Australia. I've never had a meal in London that did not give me bubble gut surprise, but also simultaneously tasted like cardboard, like a birthday oh no. card. The McDonald's yeah, is Yeah, if it's going to make bad. you shit yourself, it needs to be good. The McDonald's is bad. <laughs> Why is the McDonald's there bad? That's, I, I, now that, I, I don't even believe. How do you fuck McDonald's up McDonald's? could McDonald's. never be bad. Bad. And why is the airport giving Fort Knox, Pentagon, like level security? Like, I, oh, do you know that I there was a day in my life where I was on tour. I was probably like 18 or 19 years old. And when you're flying around the world on tour, you're bringing merchandise with you. Right. And uh, this might be a bit of an illegal thing to say, but it's true. Um, you have to have separate licenses in every country um in order to bring and sell something there mm-hmm. which is so weird if you think like in the concept of touring it's like i can't bring my merch to my show and sell it there. like yeah i guess that is really weird and the venues are like painfully down to sell it they don't want to see your license they don't want to whatever but so when you go through the customs you're trained like before you go on tour and this is for all touring artists as well so i'm i'm just saying like this isn't something that I was just taught or I, w- I just made up. Like every touring artist does this for the most part, unless I guess you're like Taylor Swift, you know, mm-hmm. but like any lower level touring anyone, you get to the customs and they ask you, are you here for business or pleasure? And you say pleasure because otherwise, if you say business, you're going to be questioned yeah, for like 12 more. hours. And then they ask you, if they ask you about the merchandise that you're bringing, you say you're going to be giving it out, that you're going to be giving it yeah, away. Not selling it. Not selling it. And so... They briefed our entire tour staff on this for our international tour. And we board this plane to London and we land. And I, I land in London. I will never fucking forget this. At like probably 10 a.m. And my show was like, I think it was probably 9 a.m. And my show was that night, mm-hmm. like at like 10 or 11 p.m. or something like that. And we get there and we all get through customs. And I'm not going to say this guy's name, but I wish I fucking could because I it's just I will never fuck. And he was just such a fucking idiot. Like who hired him? He he got fired after this. Not by me, by the touring company, by the touring company. Um, and he'd already been briefed and he gets up to customs and he's holding all these shirts that we're going to sell. And they go and keep in mind, we all just went through Are you here for business or pleasure, 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 pleasure. We're clearly a group. And he says, are you here for business or pleasure business? What are you going to do with these shirts? Their Sold merchandise. Them. This is my touring artist. They take us all to the London airport jail. The oh, no. London airport jail. I don't know if anyone's ever been to the London airport jail. It is not a travel destination. It is like 30 cots, 30 green little cots in like a room. And they take your phones. They take all your stuff and they sit you on these cots. It's freezing fucking cold. And it was like me, Ashley, Jordan. I don't even know who else was there. And we're laying on these cots, like just shivering. There's no food. There's one bathroom in the middle of the room. I kid you not, like from where you're sitting to like me. That's just like one little door and like everyone has to use it. And keep in mind, all of the other people in this airport jail are there for like drug trafficking or they're there for like doing something terrible on a plane or they're there for doing something like so fucking awful. And I'm just like, I have a show tonight. I just yeah. need to sell my shirts. Like, I don't even know. Hadn't slept the whole flight, like set flu sitting up was just like, I'm going to take 
take a nap today in my hotel room and then I'm going to do my show, whatever. So I'm going to ball on this airport cot for like seven hours, just shivering, shaking back and forth. I remember at one point they brought me goldfish and not even goldfish, British goldfish, which are awful. They can't and I'm even like, fuck with, like, they can't make goldfish, right? They don't feed you. They don't feed you. And then, so they're bringing all of us one by one into these questioning rooms, interrogating the shit out of me for like 10. I would have been fucking, fucking, cause I'm so bad at lying. I would have been like, eh, well, no, right. I wasn't even lying at that point. I was just like, oh. listen, I have a show tonight and we're trying to sell these shirts. Like, can you take the shirts? Like, I'll just have yeah. no merch. Like, just let me make it to my show. Like I need to get to my show. Yeah. And they're questioning all of us. They're questioning like Ashley. She obviously doesn't know shit about why she's fucking here. She's tagging along with me to London, like yeah. putting everyone in a room, whatever we ended up getting the permit like expedited within those hours and I got to my show as the doors open and had to do it like in my airport outfit like disheveled and whatever but it's like I have so many memories like that a story to tell that's fair I did tell that story actually on stage that night but I just have so many weird memories like that yeah, of just London. bad taste in your mouth for London and so, the well, airport maybe, it'll, just, maybe you'll uh change your mind this time maybe you'll have a really good London meal and uh, yeah, and just pe- hopefully people will be nice and it'll be fun. I get so fired up. I, fucking, mm, I don't want to go, but I'm excited for what I'm doing out there. So I have to go. And yeah, I think it'll be fun. It'll be exciting. And it's a good opportunity to get away from the temptations of L.A. again. I agree. The less time I can spend in this city is probably a sleigh. Trevi nodding off camera. Trevi, um, I think, is going with me. Trevi is my uh, new oh my God, sponsor. Fun. You do need a sponsor. Like, I want to see like low key a baby. You know how I had to have a babysitter for a while? Yeah. Maybe I think I'm at little. that point because everyone just knows I'm on the brink. And that's how I was. I needed you know. somebody constantly. And yeah. Look at me now. Booty B.O. sounds funny. Having it? Not so much. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi, the world's best whole body deodorant. It's clinically proven to control odor everywhere. Pits, private parts, and beyond for a whopping 72 hours. As an OBGYN, Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Kingman, met thousands of women concerned with the odor below the belt. Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the vagina to blame, but the bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, a pH-optimized aluminum-free deodorant that actually works and works everywhere. With over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code TANA at lumideodorant.com. I personally love Lumi because I can use it on my butthole and then my knees. I've tried it everywhere on my body and I think Lumi is an amazing, amazing product. It works and it's long lasting and Lord knows a girl doesn't like to smell. Lumi's whole body deodorant, the first of its kind. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, and feet. Created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant. Aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free. pH balance for safe use below the belt. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for new listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code TANA at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code TANA. Again, that's lumideodorant.com. Use code TANA. 40% off your brand new starter pack. On your way to a better smelling butthole. Back to the canceled podcast. We shot that podcast episode last week where I actively chose to make the first half an open conversation about some people dating. Oops. And... I said it on the podcast too. I was like, I hate that I'm wearing no makeup because I know that Mod Sun and whoever else this, you know, this is about is going to see this. And now I'm doing it again. <laughs> like you could have put a lash on, Tana. You could have put a fucking lash on because you know it's in the fucking group chat. And you know his friends are like, she looks beat anyway. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Like, but just like put the fucking lash on at least, you know, at least just go down better than this. But, um, you know that if someone wrongs me 
or comes at me incorrectly or a breakup or even a friendship thing, I, I will sit down and take the time to open my notes app and write an MLA formatted essay as my response to a person. And I had never really met my match at someone who, that does that until Maude. I mean, he's a writer at heart. He's a musician. He's a writer. That's what he does, you know? So the podcast last week had been up for three and a half hours. And I received a text so big, you have to click it to open it. And I, I do that to others, you know? So I understand that that may be my karma, if you will. And in the text, he said, and I quote, I'm sure this will end up on next week's episode, LOL. You know what's really funny, too, is he start like, this whole text is huge, as you can see. It's, it's fucking gigantic. He started the text off by saying, sent your video by multiple people. Just watched. Loved it. <laughs> like saying loved it. Loved it. And then obviously going into why he hated it. And then sent um, 48,000 lies and gaslighting statements that really have me beside myself. He actually... I will give it to him. Gaslit me so hard that I read that text and almost was like, am I wrong? I will give it to him. Like, that's one thing he is very, very good at is words and the ability to make someone question if they are wrong. And what a talent. I've been wrong before. I met my match in that regard, you know? And so I'm actually about to spend this entire flight to London tomorrow. Drafting your response. Drafting a response that purposefully will be double the size of his. Good. And just breaking it all apart. Do you know that I actually started? I've never done this before, by the way. Um, every time I send one of these long ass texts, I send them to the group chat. Like everyone loves to read because I really go out of my way. Like I will sit there on a thesaurus and be like synonyms for lying. Synonyms for, you know, synonyms for mad like, I will make yeah. sure that it is, like, absolutely, so like, a college would accept it. Like, that's just... So I always send them to the group chat because people, like, love them. And the last time I did it, it was because it was actually a work-related thing. Like, someone that we were working with was just, like, very, very wrong and mistreating Paige. And so I went out of my way to send them a novella series as to why that's... Not okay. Not okay. Amari was making a joke, like, that for the bullet points that you're sending in this series, it would be so funny if you, like, included photos and <laughs> screenshots and timestamps. And so I've actually already started this. Oh, um, you're Along insane. with my response back to him, I am going, because it is so clear that he has things a bit jumbled up timeline-wise. Okay, you should, I will you be, should literally draw it I've out I've already him. started. I am making a An graphic. actual timeline? Like a timeline of dates and times with graphics and screenshots that support my evidence. You are because hilarious. Because you, you're not about to go. You're not about to come at me. Like, it's so hard like that. I, I understand that it's a frustrating thing to have someone podcast about you. And he, you know, he's talking about that. He's like, you've, you made a video about me before and you made another video about me again. This is now countless videos where you've made it about me and I have no room to tell my story, etc. First of all, and you know what they say? Fool me once, fool me twice. Like, yes. You knew after the first time that that was a possibility. If, if you were going to do something shitty, absolutely. And I, I read that and for a second I'm like, damn, he has, he might have a point here. And then I go, karma? So true. Bam. You wrote an album called Internet Killed the Rockstar and confirmed to me that I am internet. I'm sorry that we tell our stories differently or that you maybe don't like what I said, but like... Yeah, so what if you... Maybe you had to call in it and if it were a song, he would accept it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm sorry there was no melody and chorus to the way you fucked me over. Suck a dick. No, you... <sighs> I'll get fired up if I keep talking about it, but I, I decided... Know. I think like definitely... Of course there's like times where both of you were wrong in this situation but i think his definitely outweigh you in this particular scenario i agree fully he also just dm'd you on tiktok which is really fucking weird. i think it was a genuine accident it, it was like one i'm of those, sure like, you do it was, Brooke. Like, it was one of those like send a wave three waves though when you send but a like, wave it no, sends one wave no it doesn't it sends three because i've accidentally done it to people and i'm like oh my god how do i write this wrong it's just really hard for me to look at it like an accident but i'm sure it was listen no mindy here <laughs> 
<laughs> he can't get mad at you for sharing your Holy truth online. Holy fuck. That's <laughs> a big boy right Holy there. fuck. I hope you guys know that every single time we shoot with this fucking door open, so many bugs come into this room and they gravitate towards the ceiling because the lights are all facing towards the ceiling. And my biggest fear on this planet is bugs. We shot last week's episode. I shit you not with 35 motherfucking bees in here. They like I had a, a I, like I had a honey farm and a beekeeper suit on. And Aaron's like, face your fears. Yeah. Face your fears. <laughs> face okay. your fears. And I just hope you guys know that we love you so much that we are willing to shoot in the ant farm and helicopter pad for you. Yo, what's going on out there? Oh my God, why does it sound like it's in the yard? So I have the genius idea though that once I draft my response, how fun would it be if we got all dressed up in gowns and read his text to me and my text back as spoken word wait <laughs> amazing i thought you were gonna say like showed up to his house and read it to him like a like served him no i'm i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine what if you had him like had somebody serve him like you were like divorcing him but like instead it's just a timeline like literally that's probably avril's doing right now so do you have any topics in your life that you'd like to discuss but i have one that i want to bring up because oh, no. you have been, and I think a lot of people are going to agree with you in the comments, and I just want to preface this by saying, like, morals are a thing, and she's dope for that. And I know you're all going to be like, hey, Brooke, I'm so proud of you for not settling for what you don't want. <laughs> but I just want to discuss that from my perspective, this has been the most painful thing to watch you do. Ever! <laughs> Fuck. Oh, it no. breaks me, it shatters me, it shatters me whole. It's so fucking hard for me to fucking watch. Oh my God, it kills You me. are so drama. <laughs> I really am. I didn't have to do all that, but it was fun. At all. <laughs> and here's the thing, dude. If you wouldn't fuck a, like a crackhead off Hollywood Boulevard because you like liked his personality, I wouldn't be so mad at this, you know? Yeah, I think that's the issue is I've shown that like my standards are pretty non-existent in other areas. And then this is the one standard that you have decided to put the all hail solid gold gavel in the courtroom <laughs> down on. No, I won't do this. And I think it's so crazy. So... Brooke went out to the club the other night and this guy that a lot of us know, a billionaire or a multi, no, multi millionaire? I don't know. He has a lot of money. So, so much money. Brooke goes out to the club the other night and he's like buying signs that say her name. He ends up, they're mm -hmm. leaving the club and he spends what? three thousand dollars yeah he bought all the flowers you know how they walk around with the flowers outside he bought them all and he said go home have a good night three thousand dollars in flowers they were it was stacked up taller than her if you stacked every single bouquet of flowers on its side it was taller than brooke it would take up like three kitchen islands Such the amount sweetie. of roses so he's just actively pursuing brooke and oh god it hurts me so much. he's so nice like and i actually like him like I, like I, I spent that night with him like you know we were just talking and stuff such a good personality so nice but like I have a non-negotiable problem with like him <laughs> which is he's too flashy like he literally is so obnoxiously flashy and I know that's so dumb it's like okay he, if you have money you can spend it however you want but like that's my biggest ick is like extreme displays of wealth that like you wouldn't have if nobody saw them like but you'll post on like a jet home yeah but that's funny it's like haha like lord and everybody knows that I'm not paying for that jet home okay thanks mom um I just don't like 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 she's like saying 17 like, Cartier bracelets on your like it just is tacky to me I don't know why I understand but I guess it's like we're so willing to rebrand or you know push men in different directions for so many things don't you think you could date him and say take off the bracelets and he'd listen I actually did I I told him the first day I met him I was like that is so obnoxious that was, that was kind of mean I literally was like you have to take those bracelets off it's embarrassing next day he showed up no bracelets it's that simple so then I'm at dinner with you and we had just shot a podcast and we're like sitting down we're eating at dinner and I start getting blown up from some third party um the word middlemen mediators texting me saying hey this guy let's let's call him bob bob wants to why take why do i get bob <laughs> i don't know i was thinking okay. about bob saget and how he's dead and it makes me Aww, sad rest in peace edgar edgar 
Edgar texts me. So much worse than Bob. Whatever. <laughs> Edgar is text like having someone else text me. Would Brooke rather go on a date with me? Horseback riding in Malibu. That's date option one. What? <laughs> date option two. Would she rather take my helicopter <laughs> to Catalina Island and go shopping for the day and have a great day? Hmm. Date option three. I know she wants me to be more low key. He's, he's changing. Well, if he knows that one, then why is he offering a helicopter? Get on the motherfucking helicopter. <laughs> Go somewhere. What the fuck? And then the third option is just like a fucking stupid picnic on the beach. I, I don't even want to fucking talk about it anymore. I respect him for giving me two out of three options that are like reasonable dates. It's just like I have already been so I honestly was on it. I told him I was like, I to be honest, like that's just not really my vibe. Like that's not what I'm into. And then he offers a helicopter date. I'm like, you're not getting it. But maybe you're not getting it. <laughs> have we ever thought about that and here's the thing if he's some awful piece of shit no he's so fucking nice but here's the thing this goes <laughs> this goes back to what i was kind of talking about last week where it's almost like a, i know it's a major major problem that i have but it's like i will always find something wrong with the guy who's like genuinely interested in me and that's so dumb and i know it and i'm, I'm like looking at it as an outsider i'm like you are an idiot there's nothing wrong with this man it's just but so I can't, hard to watch. It's, I don't know. It's like a, a it's mental just, thing. Yeah, but it's just like, get on the fucking helicopter, please. And it's like, why? If you're not gonna, like, can I? Can I, told I get you, on the- I told you you could. I just like, <laughs> it's not like, it, I, Lord knows how I take a breakup. So if I see something in somebody right away that I know I'm not going to tolerate long term, I'm not wasting my time on a date. The security and, like, at like Walmart could tell you have a nice day and you'd blow him. Why can't you do that yeah, with the he's helicopter probably, he's guy? He's probably funny. He would probably make a good father. He probably doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't fucking post fucking doing this out, outside a jet. Like, it's just not my vibe. But listen, he's go- he's going to be amazing for somebody. One of you guys. Fuck it. <laughs> it's like, okay. I'll take it. I don't know. Who knows? I could change my mind. I could go on a date with him and like it could be amazing. But like just I just think this could be really good. I for love you. listen, I love money. Okay. I <laughs> let that be known. I love money and I would love to be with a man with money, but there's such a huge difference to me that with like in like somebody who is like that, where it's like everybody needs to know how much money I have. I need to like flaunt it so much. I need to wear a million bracelets. I need to drive a G Wagon. I need to buy Justin Bieber's house. And like somebody who has a lot of money and is quiet about it. I agree with that. And I obviously fully like, you know, it's hypocritical of me because obviously a lot of my job that I've now looped everyone into is kind of but that's like displaying f- things. But I guess if my job wasn't being like an influencer yeah, and I just, just made this money. This is just a regular individual. Yeah, and I just made a bunch of money. I would I like wouldn't even have an Instagram. So I understand the like like I definitely gravitate more towards a man who does not feel the need to display his wealth for society's approval. Yeah. However, I think that's such an easy thing to change. It isn't. No, it isn't. Because it's like that. That's what I know that person cares about. Like I know that person cares so much about showing people how much money they have, and that's a major character flaw. But like have. We've talked about the Tink's fatal flaw theory, right? Obviously on this. Mm -hmm. Have we? And that, yeah. Well, no, we haven't. But basically the concept is like you find a fatal flaw in somebody. And if you can like look past it. Like everyone, essentially everyone has a fatal flaw. Like all your best friends, you know, have that one thing that you hate that you wish you could change. But you can't change everything about a person, you know. And you you have to decide in the beginning whether it's acceptable to you or not. And if you just once you decide it's acceptable, you can never say anything about it again. Mm. But I have decided that is not acceptable. But (laughs) but listen, I did go on another date this week. I went on another date this week also with a very, very rich person who would wear, you know, a T-shirt and Converse and call it a day. So that's my vibe. I still am going for the money. Just you know, kidding. as long as you're still going for the money. No, um, I'm not. If you just, need me to build a bear, the other man. I and, want someone with money. Like, if you need me to help you build a bear, the other man into wearing a Steve Jobs fit and deleting you his can, Instagram, I would love to do so. You can build a bear him into your boyfriend. Build a boyfriend. Ooh, that's like a good concept. I don't know where I could go with that. Build a bitch is a thing. This what was that Bella Porch's song? Yeah. It's a good song. What? She's does, she, does she make music still? I don't know, but she really ate. I love that. 
Should we discuss some pop culture now that we've ruined their lives a little? And I, oh God, I hope he doesn't see this because he's such a fucking nice guy. He's so nice and I love you. I am so excited to tell you about the topic that I have okay. at hand. It's actually the only thing that made me feel like we have a podcast today. Like it's the, I just, I can't get over it. Aaron, I'm going to send you a video. Um, so there's this girl um, who blew up on TikTok. And her name is Pinky Doll. Oh, my God. Is this your live you were doing last night? Uh-huh. It was so funny. I was cracking up. Her name is Pinky Doll. And she does what I believe is classified as, and I can't think of another word other than fetish, so I'm sorry in advance, but like NPC, like fetish What's content. NPC? Like non-playable character people call people NPCs when they say like, 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 you know, in the video game when you're like a character and then like all the characters that just like no one's playing them. It's just like whatever. Like have you ever like been in a restaurant and everyone looks like they're just like placed there. Like this, this happens to me a lot because I smoke a lot of weed, but you're just like everyone here is a fucking NPC or you'll be like that person I just met was a fucking NPC. Yeah. Yeah. But NPC fetishing is kind of like playing into that. And people fetishize it, like acting like a robot almost, acting like whatever. And so she started doing these TikToks, these TikTok lives, and they went immensely, immensely viral, especially on Twitter. Because Twitter was like, what the fuck is this bitch doing? Like, blah, 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 like blowing up, you know? And these are the lives. I'm going to have him play this for you right now. This is a clip of, of what it is. Balloon. Grab, 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 grab. Mmm. Coconut, so good. Grab, 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 balloon. Notice how she's also grab. popping popcorn with a flat iron. Mm, ice cream, so good. Oh, wait, I ooh, love when she ooh, did the- ooh. Oh. oh, thank you, VC. You got me feeling like a queen, huh? Thank you, Shelby. Fire, 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 fire. Oh, gang, gang. Gang gang. Mm, ice cream, so good. That's my fire, favorite part. Fire, I love gang gang. No, can we please fire, give fire. Him, please? Take your leanies. Oh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Meow, meow. Mm, that was so good. Coconut. Pop. Amazing. Okay, I feel like I think I've seen the vision. Oh, thank you, Chris. I love and, you. and you know what's crazy? Yeah, Just yeah, like yeah, a complete yeah, side yeah. note. Mm-hmm. I've watched mm-hmm. her on live, like in my own bed, no one around for like 45 minutes. Like for some reason, I can't look away. Dude, I get like, that. I have this mm. disabled cat that I watch on live and all <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead fucking serious. Dude, he just lays there. <laughs> and I will watch him for an hour at so a time. So I, I am just fully, I am fully into this without even knowing why. Like, I'm just like this crazy. Chris Miles originally sent this to me. And it's probably I was like, like ASMR where it's just like weirdly like satisfying. Right. No, right. So then I start seeing all these TikToks about it as it's going viral. The reason why she's saying those things like, Mm, ice cream so good is because people are gifting her on TikTok live. And so when people spend money on gifts on you on TikTok live, like essentially you can go live and people can click these little emoticons to give you like gifts, which are like animated things that pop up on the screen. And essentially they cost like 99 cents and then you make like 45 cents of that, uh-huh. like of the gifts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So every time she's receiving a gift, she's responding with like an NPC fetishized um approval or reward or thank you of it you know so the mm, ice cream so good they gift her an ice cream you know like all of those are i'm doing that. It after this and so come to find out she is making on average like six to eight thousand dollars alive and she's doing like three a day so she's ma- and she's like oh God, 19 she could buy a helicopter and then she's on her tiktok not being fully normal but like pretty like nothing like that Like, do you know what I mean? Like, she's like, I want to talk to Cardi B. Like, Cardi B was in my life. Like, it's like more normal shit. And it's like, no, I don't give a fuck if everyone in the world thinks I'm a fucking NPC. If I'm making 24 grand a day. What is that? Yeah, absolutely not. And that's not minimum. That's like without 24 times 30. That's $720,000 a month. Am I correct? I don't know. Your calculator knows better than me. Yeah, but she's she's apparently been doing this and making a lot of money, not that much till she went viral. So like yesterday, Timbaland, like the singer or whatever, was like the number one gifter in her life for hours. Like oh now God, there's like fun. there's like 40,000 people in her life. So now I'm assuming she's making like even more, even like double that. You know what I mean? God, like, how fun. She's cashing the fuck. So now my whole TikTok for you page, every live is other people doing this. Trisha Paytas was doing it all day today. Like Sorry, everyone's Trisha. doing this. And so. I'm going to send you a video of me, Erin. 
Aaron, um, this is the funniest thing I've ever done. I'm not kidding. You I, did I, this? I it's not you did not do this. And I well, No, Aaron, just look, it's so funny. We're, we're gonna get in, we're gonna get into it um in a second. I was crying. About I love me. when people do this to you. I will never, never hate on a bitch in her bag. So if you see me on live later today going, gang, 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 ice cream, so good. Mind <laughs> your fucking business. Gang, 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 gang. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so good. Wow. That's pretty good. Popcorn, okay, so you get good. the point, right? Mm, hot dog, so good. <laughs> so, hot dog, so good. So I'm also one thing about me is when I find out how much money someone is making doing some outlandish shit, obviously not like some illegal shit, but I mean like, Something You'll like it. that. You'll dabble. You know, I'm going to, I need to know for myself. In two minutes, I made $2,700. Oh, go live in right now. In two minutes doing that. Oh, like, my normally God. the gifts come in like so, like, like slower, you know? Oh, like they come in slower because people are just gifting because they love you. And then you're like, oh my God, thank you, Lacey, for the heart. But everyone like wants to see you do that. So they're just gifting, 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 gifting. Like, what I made mean, two thousand seven hundred dollars in two minutes. Oh my god! I wonder if there's like little kids who are like running up their parents' card that don't know about it. You know how like and everybody did that on what's it called, like Fruit Ninja or whatever. Absolutely, but it's like imagine I did that for an hour. Do it for an what's hour. Two thousand seven hundred times sixty. Now who it's do you think like you're missing. asking? It's one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars. If I did that for one hour, I would have made one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. Coconut so good wow <laughs> like why the fuck is anyone hating on this at all like i don't understand i but think it's gonna become oversaturated pretty soon here so you better really jump on the boat but maybe it's just about the way you do it because i've seen so many i was gifting to people like because the way that they do it like everyone like puts their own like touch on it okay and it's like maybe you need to add a new element like a like a cool outfit i saw this girl doing it with her boyfriend and it was so funny because she'd be like so good and then he'd be like so good like he was like ad-libbing <laughs> oh, her and i was gifting like the them like I think I've spent the entire $2,700 on paying other people to do it because I'm like so amazed by this being like a real thing in the new way that God. people in the industry are making money. I love that like we just don't know like like for example a month ago if you told explain that to somebody they'd be like what the fuck are you talking about? I wonder like how many things are being thought of right now like in a month we're going to be like what the fuck is this? It's because even when Chris originally sent me that girl I was like oh she's off her rocker that's crazy and then come to find out she is on her rocker she's right on that rocker and the rocker solid gold like solid i gold can't rocker. even believe that's a real thing and i'm just so happy we got to talk about that i would have made one hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. i think i'm gonna have to do it later i think you're gonna have to go live again sister absolutely um let's see I what else. Race. that would put a victorian child in a coma yeah what? <laughs> <laughs> yes it would 100 the island boys can't stop kissing um i did see that why were they making out and why is that not the only set of twins that i've seen make out i know that i just went on an entire tangent about getting your bag but but that, that is, is where, where draw i the draw the line why why are they kissing <laughs> i guess like Here's the only thing I will say about it. No, but it, apparently it gets worse before you say something that's going to defend them. You're right. It I'm, gets well, worse. I'm not defending this, to be clear. It apparently gets worse on other websites. Worse. Like that one website, you know, <laughs> keeps my lights on. Um, but you're joking, right? That, that's a joke. That's not a joke. So the only thing I will say is like, since they are genetically identical, it's like pretty much the same as like kissing your own arm get seek help you're right i'm so the confused but no you're no. right that's not it's weird it's weird don't this do that. sent me into this i a conversation i was There's i think was also with chris it's literally terrible um but no it actually was with ryan <laughs> you could just say your friend <laughs> oh yeah that's so true this conversation with my pal um where it's like i would fuck a clone of me hmm. would you fuck a clone of yourself just to find out what it was like, maybe. But I would want to do it with, like, I wouldn't want to be in my own body when I did it. Like, no, I'd want to be in my oh, own body and, like, a tan of clone shows up. And we just fuck. Like, that'd be so fun. But I would never fuck my 
it's like I just don't yeah that's the problem is like there's a personality there that's weird yeah and that's someone that you also I was differentiating the fact that a clone would just show up and like leave like you yeah, they grew up together yeah well a clone They're would the have your blood. same personality too right wait I'm confused like th- this is the same way I, I probably feel end about up fighting my clone actually I didn't you even heard, think about the personality have you heard stories about like twins hooking up with a guy together I, I think that's fucking weird too yes like the those two twins that were married to Hugh Hefner are Crystal and something. Yeah, that's weird. Or they, weird. they both dated Hugh Hefner at the same time for like a really long time. And I remember even just being like 15. Being like, that's but did they weird. ever like hook up with him at the same time? I don't know. I know they went on some documentary and like told everything. But I, I We really should have know. Holly Madison on. I want to have Holly Madison on so bad. Her life story is my absolute favorite ever. She's my favorite human. Love her. Yeah, no. She, I she watches the whole conversation before this. She's like, yeah, no. Nope, probably not. To- probably not her vibes. No, she's really honest. I think she would come on. Yeah, I'd probably that. fuck me, honestly. <laughs> but Looks just, off. <laughs> and it's like, I supported the Island Boys up until this. Like, uh, that well, whole thing of where you, you went wrong. Well, the whole thing of them, like, walking off impulsive and shit I did think was weird. I was like, be less of a bitch, like, whatever, blah, like, blah, blah. But, like... We do support. But um, I was like, OK, they have all these tattoos and they're weird looking and people always hate on people like that. And sometimes there is a market to capitalize off of that and like be yourself and you want to be that. And that's cool. But sometimes judgment is right. Sometimes and, and it's OK. I have quickly learned that the public was correct for judging them. I and you just know that it's one of those things where they're getting all this attention right now. So they're feeding into it. But like in 10 years you're going to need a straight jacket for that. Yeah, or, you can't And if you that. don't need a straight jacket for that in 10 years, like, that's even scarier. Dude, I have a major issue with that. I was actually meaning to ask you this today. Like, do you ever get scared that, like, we can't undo any of this? Like, I was thinking about it on my little date. I was like, because he said, like, not that he's scared of going on the podcast, but I told, like, you know, everyone who goes out with us has to know it's a possibility. And, like, there are hundreds of hours of like footage of us just like saying the most outlandish things like we could never ever erase that i have had a couple spirals about that in life but it was more in like my story time days or like the first couple times i got sued like now i just know like like when you just know you're too deep you're too deep and what else can you do yeah, like, but i can't it? wake up one day and decide i want to be mysterious like and yeah. what sucks what i hate about it the most is like you know how like you know when you really want to know what an ex is up to or what they're doing and what their lives like and like you know where they're at now yeah every person ever is gonna have the opportunity to literally know exactly like like i can't be mysterious at all i can't hide anything i never thought about it like that like oh what's Santa doing that still like i was thinking about that in in regard to my ex like i'm I, i have no fucking idea what he's up to but he knows exactly what i'm up to I hate that. It is scary, but anyway, death to him. Wipe your tears with the dollar bill, Shade. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, terrible advice. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just in my. I've I've accepted it, and I'm here to work with you through that. And I that's guess true. That's but imagine why a lot like, of people leave this space. Yeah, you know that's why a lot of people like over time they're like, "Fuck, I don't want to do that anymore." But I don't know. I have fun. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I also don't. But imagine like Sophia Richie Grange. Okay, imagine she has this big like rebrand blow up, and then all of a sudden you know, flash on TikTok. It's a video of her talking about burying a tampon on the beach. Mm. And I knew the tampon was going to get brought up into it because as soon as you said that, that was exactly what came to my mind was the tampon story. A lot of people in the comments agreed that it wasn't as serious as you thought it was. A lot of people in the comments need as much mental help as we do. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's all go back. Um, cerebral. Yeah, so the Island Boys are, yeah. Um... God, the internet is just like a crazy mess right now. Lena the Plug and Adam 22. I don't, I saw like a little something on Twitter. What's going on? Adam and Lena do porn. Yes. They do it together. Sometimes they invite girls in. Adam hooks up with all of the girls that they invite in. But shortly after they got married, they decided that it would be a fun endeavor to for Adam to finally let Lena hmm. fuck a guy as well. Okay. For porn. It didn't go well. Adam is getting clowned on the internet unlike anything I've ever seen. Oh no. The memes are 
hilarious. Oh, man, we're going to make it so she could never fuck another guy again. And I think that's definitely what has happened. I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on this and I could get all like feminist, but it's like just so far gone. That well, that's kind of shitty. I don't know. I would. Lord knows. I guess it's different if that's your like job and your industry. But like I could never. He tweeted out when you needed a job done right. You call a professional. <laughs> Oh my god, he tweeted that, and <laughs> and good for him. He like very much so has like jumped on the bandwagon of making fun of it as well. I think a lot of people have a lot of jokes about it as well because this man that came in to do the job done professionally, get the job done professionally, Wrong is thing. quite famous for being heavily, heavily, heavily well endowed. Oh no, uh, heavily. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You pro- like you got to. I mean, but then they bring him on for an interview. The guy who hit it and he's saying like, yeah, I wouldn't let my wife do that. But like he just and it's it just like the memes just can't stop. It's crazy. Aww. I mean, what I will but say, the Internet's so funny. I love that is it's kind of the same thing as the NPC thing where it's like, thank God, Adam and Lena can just hopefully be. I mean, everyone has so much to say that Adam's like just like smiling through the pain. But if they are as happy as they're like playing it off to be they are laughing all the way to the bank they probably made millions yeah, they and probably millions made so much money and the more um attention it gets the more money they're gonna make mm-hmm. so it's like whatever make the memes they're crazy though they could are you, crazy could you i don't think i can in a relationship that. where you like let someone let your husband fuck another girl i can't imagine myself in that relationship weirdly um but no, not now. It was that was a bad joke. Um, I was accidentally in one of those. That's that was my joke. Um, probably not. No, I don't think I'd re- I like. I'm not a threesome girl. I've never had a threesome because like when I date a guy, I never had a proper threesome either. Like I just I can't. I think it's got to be even numbers or more okay. numbers. Yeah, she says she's never had a threesome. Like oh, I'm so innocent. She's had a foursome, a five sum. Okay, but a foursome is so lit because it's like everyone <laughs> has something to do. Yeah, you do need, like, you're right. Even numbers are important. Everyone has an activity. Whereas a threesome, it's like this interesting balance game, you know, where it's like. What about a threesome and an iPad? (laughs) There we go. (laughs) And then I can play Flappy Bird while he eats her out, you know? You were already playing Flappy Bird. (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) So stupid. Do you guys want to come join? Have I ever talked about this on Cancelled? My note for all the reasons that she cries. I think a little. I keep this master list on my phone of any reason or any time Lila tells me she cried and why. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. (laughs) Hey, are you having trouble reading? So much. Dropping out at 13 Uh, really does that to you. (laughs) And all of these have parentheses, you know, where I like. Oh my God, I'm so excited. You guys are ready. This is my favorite list, but I haven't heard it like until like 15 blackouts ago. So my brain's like not working. Crying because Olivia is leaving L.A. In parentheses, not that Olivia isn't amazing, but she met her at Stagecoach <sighs> this month and has only hung out with her twice since that. <laughs> like hysterically, too. Like, I, like the- weeping. <laughs> like, Lila, call it a day. You met her literally last Friday. You've had catch steak more times than last week than you've hung out with this girl. Cried because she witnessed Paige's parents being so sweet to her. They were. I mean, that's a I'm good sorry, reason to cry. I have a family, and I know. I completely like. understand that that is a sweet moment, but she was sobbing in the Laurel Hardware at a restaurant. Was embarrassing. <laughs> like scream, crying <laughs> in I this restaurant. I could have done it on my own time. And it's and Paige's parents weren't like, "Oh, honey, that's so nice." They were terrified. <laughs> they were terrified. Oh. Okay. Well, Tana and her ninth personality showed up to dinner, acting like she like sits with her teddy bears all night, like. With okay, her okay, 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 like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Cried at her own TikTok of her going to Malibu Wine Farms because it was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke was there, and I honestly think, was it cute? It was cute. It was, it was cute. Like, you can change your hair. I yes. did cry at my own TikTok, too, the other day. It was my vlog. I took my mom and Brooke and my two other best friends, and it was a wholesome moment. Crying because of how proud she is of Michaela Testa for <laughs> releasing a clothing collab with White Fox. <laughs> Honestly, it was that's a good reason. See, all, the problem is you're and reading I, these, and I'm like, these are all good collab, reasons. I, I cried at your Dizzy shoe. I cried when Tanibus, you know, never launched. You were like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't you know. You can still get it. It's on Grass Door. If anybody wants Tana, go I'm ahead and get kidding. it. Um, um, you met a dog at the dog park with your childhood's dog, your childhood dog's <laughs> name, and it wouldn't leave your side. It was a. Compl- I grew up with a golden retriever named Zoe, and she died. And then this dog at the dog park came up and just sat next to me, and I was like, <gasps> she reincarnated. <laughs> Bald my eyes out, and then and I was covered in chamoy because I went to the fruit stand. So imagine me covered in chamoy crying because Zoe wouldn't leave my side. Was it a No. It just was named Zoe. It was just a dog named Zoe. Or Dachshund, whatever. Whatever that is. She ordered an Uber, and it was a Toyota Highlander, and broke down on the floor of the Mondrian Hotel on all fours because it was a Toyota Highlander. Okay, that was a genuine... <laughs> okay, y'all. If like, first of all, I'm really tall, and second of all, I'm trans, and so, <laughs> so one safety is an issue. If I get in a, a certain type of car that's a little small and literally the size of my left kneecap, I'm gonna feel crammed and I'm gonna get anxiety. So if it's not an Escalade ESV or a Suburban or Lincoln Navigator, the big kind, a Yukon. Oh God, I love those. The new 2024 the, ones the are crazy. With the, like, the, the volume. The volume. Oh, God. Oh, you can turn up the volume in the back of the fucking car. Yeah. Ah! At the baby's birthday party oh, that I took Lila to, the baby started crying when the cake came out, and Lila literally, word for word, in front of my entire f- family, goes, me when my car's not a Suburban. I go, <laughs> no, time and I'm place. I'm not kidding. Everyone was crying because this baby turns one. Apparently, that's an emotional See, thing. See, that's the thing. Everyone clowns me See, for crying all the she, time. Did you hear what she just fucking said? She said, everyone was crying when this baby turned one. Apparently, that's an emotional thing. You cried over Michaela Testa's White Fox collab. <laughs> I'm proud of her and she got richer. That's exciting. And also, the baby turning one, like, okay. She's not gonna remember. <laughs> don't know. It's like that that's where I don't get it. I think point is Lila is a crier. Well, I just wanted to have you guys on really just for like a fun little chitty chat. And I appreciate you sitting in on canceled. People always request particularly you two. Yeah. Aww. We're always like, we want to see Trevi and Lila. But you know I'll always come and just like blab. I love a good Always blab. love a good blab. Love a good Pete covered walk home from a homeless man's. What? Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Cancelled. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And we will be back next week with hopefully the tea from London, the tea from Brooks, hopefully new billionaire boyfriend, and maybe some other special guests. We love oh, you guys so we... much. Oh, you guys. <laughs> okay. Bye, you guys.